So let's talk about goal setting. Have you got a goal that you've been talking about, thinking about, wondering about for quite some time? Or do you know somebody that has? I'm thinking of the kind of thing where you say, oh, I'd really like to do that. And six months later, you're still saying, I'd really like to do that. And sometimes a couple of years later, you're still saying, oh, I'd really like to do that. So if there's something that draws you in that way, how come you actually don't make it happen? It's an interesting question, isn't it? But sometimes it's lack of clarity. Sometimes it's lack of a plan. So if those things are in place and you're still not making any progress, then sometimes what people will say is, oh, well, I guess I'm just lazy or I just don't have enough willpower, or something like that. Often, though, the bit that's missing is an awareness of what we call in NLP, the secondary gain. Now, this is a benefit, again, from not achieving the goal. Now, at first glance, that seems paradoxical. You might think, how could there be some benefit from not achieving your goal? But in fact, it usually means that there's a gap between where you are today and where you want to get to, so the goal that you want to achieve. And if you have a sense that there's something in this situation that you might have to give up in order to get here, then if this is important and you don't want to give it up, then it might keep you stuck in the current situation. So let me give you some examples of this. Sometimes they're really simple things. So Lots of people say, oh, I'd really like to get fit. I'd really like to go to the gym three times a week and be so fit that I can run a half marathon or whatever it is that makes them excited. So given that kind of mindset, how many people actually go and train there three nights a week? Well, obviously, lots of people do. And I know loads of people who are very good at getting off to the gym and doing that training and maintaining their fitness at the level they want to. But I also know quite a lot of people who talk about it much more than they actually do it. And you can just say, OK, well, that person's lazy or they don't have willpower or whatever. But that takes us nowhere. That kind of um, reasoning just leads to a dead end. So what if we were to say, OK, what's that person got to give up in order to go to the gym three nights a week? Well, it could be on a very simple level. It could be that it's time. It could be that there are other things the person likes doing with the time when they're not at work and they're not willing to give up doing whatever those things are. It could be just hard to fit it in with everything else that they're committed to. So that could be one simple reason why. It could be, and this is one that I've uncovered with a lot of people, that if you're thinking about doing something like exercising at the end of a working day, for some people that feels like a bit of a chore. And if you've worked hard and you feel like you've done a good day's work, then there may be a sense of wanting to reward yourself at the end of working day. And going to the gym might not feel like a reward. So sometimes it's purely and simply that the thing that the person doesn't want to give up is their ability to say, OK, I finished work for the day, I can go home and put my feet up and reward myself by relaxing and reading the newspaper or watching the TV or whatever it is that they like to do as a bit of a treat at the end of a busy day. Sometimes it's much more subtle. Sometimes in order to cultivate a new habit of going to the gym, a person would have to give up their sense of themselves as somebody who stays fit by doing other things. So if you've always played a lot of sports, perhaps team sports, and you find that for some reason that's not possible anymore, to then be faced with the only way I can maintain my fitness is to go and work out in a gym, then that may not be appealing. Because if there's some kind of sense of I'm not the kind of person who goes and lifts weights and runs on treadmills, you know, I do real stuff, I play football or squash or tennis or something, um, then it could be that that alters, that requires an alteration of mindset in order to go to the gym. So this is a really interesting line of inquiry because whatever we discover in terms of thinking, what do I have to give up in order to achieve my goal? Whatever we discover here, then we can start to do something about it. Because the question then becomes, how do I get both? How can I keep this thing that I like about the present situation and also make progress towards my goal? And that's just a problem waiting to be solved, really far more useful line of inquiry than dismissing yourself or someone else as simply being lazy or lacking in willpower. 
In fact, I'd go a step further. If you're achieving something by dint of willpower, then I suspect it's not sustainable. Because willpower basically means that on some level, you are forcing yourself to do something that on another level doesn't appeal. So willpower is an indication that there is a certain amount of personal conflict. And so if I've got one part of me that's exerting the upper hand and is you know, forcing me to go to the gym or whatever it is, or stick to a diet or stick to a programme of study, then the part that doesn't want to do that, that is under the thumb of the, the part that's got the willpower, that other part at some point is going to say, OK, I'm done with this. I'm fed up with not being able to do what I want to do. And there will be a rebellion. Very few people who exert willpower to get things done find that that's an easy path. Most people who have to exert willpower find that at some point they start rebelling against themselves. (laughs) And the part that's, that's being suppressed in order to achieve the goal will start to complain. So I think it's far, far more useful to look at all aspects and say, okay, so if if in some ways I do want this goal and in other ways I don't, let's look at why I don't, about what I think I've got to give up, about what are the benefits of just not doing anything about it and see if there's a better way that I can pull everything together and get what I want in a way that really feels like it fits with who I am. So have a look at some of your goals that have been hanging around a while and just ask yourself the question, is there something that I think I might have to give up in order to achieve this that just feels like too high a price to pay. And you know, you may be surprised that when you delve around inside your own mind and you pull out all the pieces of the puzzle, sometimes it's not as logical as it seemed when it was all in the back of your mind. And sometimes it is possible to get what you want without having to give anything up. It's just that without the clear and logical analysis... You can't always tell the difference between something that you can have and something that's impossible. So it's worth spending a little bit of time just to figure out what's really going on in those situations where you're not achieving what you set out to achieve. And maybe even five or ten minutes worth of thinking hard about what's really happening could pay off in terms of enabling you to achieve something that you've long said you wanted to achieve but haven't yet been able to make it happen.